Welcome back to this YouTube channel. Last week I talked about Sergei Loznitsa's Donbass, and this is a good moment to honour another Ukrainian filmmaker, Larisa Shapitko, who died young in a car accident in 1979 with just four credits. Her debut was the sad and beautiful film Krylia, or Wings, in 1966, which incidentally has the most poignant marriage proposal scene I've ever experienced on film. Maya Bulkakova plays Nadezhda, a formidable middle-aged woman and, we assume, a widow. She is a former World War II fighter pilot with a grown-up daughter, Tanya, who happens to be adopted, something to which Nadezhda attaches great significance, believing that this is part of the emotional rift between them. In this post-war world about the era of the film's 1966 release, Nadezhda is now a school head teacher, careworn about all her responsibilities, disciplining errant teenagers, rebuking lax teachers, and dealing with her daughter's new husband, an older divorcee whom she questions as fiercely and clumsily as if with one of her misbehaving pupils. Poor Nadezhda never got the hang of dealing with the younger generation, and her days are interrupted by reveries of the glorious freedom up in the clouds. Wings is a bittersweet character study featuring a hilarious and pointedly metaphorical comedy set piece in which Nadezhda sportingly fills in at the last moment for a youth theatre dancing Russian dolls routine because the boy in the main doll costume, a boy she expelled, has run away. There's also an amazing and almost hallucinatory final moment in which Nadezhda takes to the skies once more. This is a Ukrainian film in the sense that the director is Ukrainian born. In every other sense, of course, its political energies and loyalties are Soviet and related to the Soviet Russian motherland. But the point is also that Shapitko is not Ukrainian in any aggressive ethno-nationalist sense, the sense that Vladimir Putin has fantasized and fabricated to justify his invasion. Nadezhda's own loyalties born of wartime heroism and opposition to the Nazis, are precisely the kind of feeling exploited and distorted by Putin, who is not old enough to have faced any such danger or sacrifice, and who wore uniform only as a KGB officer policing his own people. It's a wonderful, humane film, showing next Tuesday at the French Institute in London, and I shall be speaking briefly before the screening. Sean Baker is a filmmaker who became a hero and an icon to all new directors for shooting his breakthrough movie Tangerine on his iPhone using the app Filmic Pro. His new film, Red Rocket, has a lot of that lo-fi energy. It's another story of tough lives at the margin, and it's essentially an adult American pastoral and a story of mad survivalist chutzpah and never-say-die optimism. Simon Rex plays a failed adult movie star with the unsubtle professional name of Mikey Saber. The film's title is, come to think of it, just as unsubtle. His porn career in LA has gone south, so now he shows up back in his hometown in Texas, hoping to crash for a couple of days with his abandoned wife. You said you're never going to step a foot in Texas again. I know, this is unexpected. Oh, nothing with you is unexpected. Your last job is over 17 years ago. That's quite a gap. Well, you know, I've worked almost every day for the last 17 years. I moved back in with my wife last week. No, I'm calling the cops. Four, nine, really? Eight. We decided to make a run of it. I just need a place to crash for a couple of days. What's the big deal? Nike, go fuck yourself. All right, look, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm an adult film actor. Excuse me? Soon Mikey is annoying the hell out of his spouse and indeed his mother-in-law and starts a temporary new job dealing weed and then he chances across a young woman at the local donut shop called Strawberry. With the same certainty of James Mason encountering Judy Garland in A Star Is Born only with more porn and less self-sabotaging gloom, Mikey is convinced that Strawberry is a natural in his business and his ticket back to the triple X big time. The year this is happening is 2016, with Hillary Clinton facing off with Donald Trump for the US presidency. And it's very tempting to read Mikey as a parable for Trumpism right now. An American Jacobite exile, in retreat, brooding about what is rightfully his, plotting an imminent return to glory. This is really vivid, 
funny, real-life filmmaking with a social realist aesthetic, but also an acrid sense of humour. The two often don't go together. Simon Rex himself is, among other things, a former porn actor, and casting a porn veteran in a straight movie is a slightly high-risk manoeuvre. Paul Schrader did it with James Dean, with two E's, in The Canyons in 2013, and Catherine Brea did it with Rocco Suffredi in Romance in 1999. But Simon Rex is, I think, best. His Mikey is a fast-talking hustler and predator with a gift for drawing people into his orbit and persuading them that his interests are their interests. There's something sad and lonely and funny about him. There are some really interesting developments in the world of new British horror right now, and one such is A Banquet, an extremely smart feature debut from Scottish filmmaker Ruth Paxton, though it's sort of on the border between horror and psychological thriller. Sienna Guillory plays Holly, a well-to-do single mum who lives for her teen daughters, albeit in a very controlling way. She's always cooking them Instagrammably perfect meals and has a slightly creepy and possibly related preoccupation with checking how neatly the loo rolls are laid out. But one daughter is going to test her picture-perfect happy family lifestyle. The pressure these girls are getting from all sides. You can be anything. You're my special girl, Bets. There's this story about a beautiful young woman. She's perfect in every way, except for one thing. She never eats. Holly's daughter, Betsy, played by Jessica Alexander, refuses to eat another thing, but weirdly never loses any weight. Her toughly unsentimental gran, played by Lindsay Duncan, believes that Betsy is a modern incarnation of the Japanese mythic monster, the Futokuchi Ona, a creature with a second mouth hidden in its hair at the back of its head. Is Betsy keeping her weight up by secretly consuming her family's psychic happiness? Or is there some other more rational explanation connected with family dysfunction and food? It's a really unnerving film. I'm going to leave it there. Please come along to next Tuesday's special screening of Wings in aid of Ukraine relief charities. Please also remember to buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. And most vitally of all, please, please, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed. Be seeing you.